All right, here we go. Godfrey, welcome to Vlad TV. Finally, finally fucking made it here. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Yo, I'm like, I started watching this shit a couple years ago. And I was seeing everybody on it. Aries, Method Man, all the hip hop stars, comedians. I saw your Cardi B joint. Just all this, I said, wow, this is cool. Get so many hits. And I go, now how the hell can I get on this shit? Because I feel like you've, you're, you're, you're in the mix. You've made it when you're on this show. You're like, you're no, on some real shit, you're like, like Johnny Carson type shit. No, you know what I'm saying? But online, you feel me? Cause, but it's more candid, way more candid. You're like some Charlie Rose. I'm gonna call you Johnny Rose. You're Johnny Carson, Charlie Rose. I'm gonna call you. No, fuck that. I'm gonna call you Bar. It's Barbara Walters, Johnny Carson, and and Rose. So I'm gonna call you <laughs> Johnny Rose <laughs> Carson. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I really was like, I got addicted to Vlad TV because I'm like, the interviews are great. I've watched a lot of them, and so I said, man, I'm finally here. And then I see. You, I, you're a Russian dude with a beard. <laughs> yeah. His name is, what's your name, Vladislav? Vladislav, yeah. Vladislav? Lubovny. Lubovny. Damn, yep. you're like mafia, that's mafia shit. I want you to, it would be great, it would be so funny if you were really Russian and said, so tell me, what is like being black comedian? Tell me, I like, I, I have to ask question. I'm from Russia, Ruski da. Ruski, do you speak Russian? Yeah, I was actually born in Russia. I was born in the Ukraine, but it was Russia at the time. You know, I got a show in Moscow in April. I'm going yeah. to Moscow. Am I going to be all right? I don't know, man. Putin's kind of a gangster, so I know. know. Maybe I maybe I'm doing comedy for Putin. You never know. He's like, if you're not funny, we kill you. Okay, <laughs> but if you're funny, you get money. Ochen <laughs> shmishnoi, yeah. Yeah. Shmishnoi means very funny. Yeah, I'm not. Shmishnoi. Ochin is very. Ochin. Shmishnoi means funny. I'm telling you. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Shmishnoi. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I'm right. Don't you question me. Ochin. Spasiba. All right. Bajalsta. Bajalsta. I did a little Russian. See, I'm just trying to change your interviews, let you know I knew Russian. No one else did. That's right. Congrats. Well, thank you, but I'm glad to be here, man. It's really, I was pretty frantic. To come here. Thank so. you, man. I, I'm a big fan of your comedy for a long I, time, man. You know what? I appreciate it. And you don't even realize the people that... Because you you know what? In this business, they, you know, especially with African-American comedy, you know, they name the, the, the usual suspects. You got the Chappelle's, you know, the Cat Williams, the Kevin Hart's, you know what I mean? They name all the same people, the Chris Rock. So when I get... When someone says, I've been a fan of yours for a long time, it feels good because I've been doing it 20 plus you know what I mean? And so guys like, even like Dion Cole, I, you guys just had him on. And I, mm -hmm. we both came up together in the Chicago circuit. Me and Dion Cole, Corey Holcomb, and all of us, we, we you know, used to do open mics at Bernie Mac's club at the Cotton Club in Chicago. This is 95. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So when I get, when someone says they're a fan of mine, I really take it to heart. I really go, well, man, I appreciate that because my name isn't always spewed out. It's there. You know, I'm, you know, I'm in... But I'm not in. I've always been that guy that's kind of been on the side. I, I People know me, but then they don't. You get where I'm coming from? Well, I remember I interviewed uh, Lavelle Crawford. Well, you said that the industry sets it up for only one black comedian at a time. Yeah. It's, Explain. It's proven fact. Look, look at like the comics that make it one at a time. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart, they think he's the only comedian in the world right now for real because I mean he's not even if he helps out they oh Kevin Hart oh he's the greatest no he's not he's good I love Kev you know but he know it he's riding that vehicle Cat William before him and then he went he went loco you know a little bit I don't know what happened God bless him he's my friend I love him to death but Cat William one comedian and it be just it just like steps it's not like dictating one comic going to bring all the comedy to the masses. And that's that's how a black comedian, in, especially, I'm just really meaning mainstream. Are you a Kevin Hart type? Are you, fuck no, I'm too tall to be a Kevin Hart type. 
<laughs> I mean, Kevin, yeah, hell, I don't even know if I can even put my baby toe in Kevin Hart's shoe, you know. But I'm a Lavelle Crawford type, you know. But that's the thing, black comics, and I meant that, and I, and I say that they don't they don't let you have the same, I guess, platform as mainstream hmm. comics. You have to cross over. Do you know that one? I'm gonna say it one nigga at a time. Or they call it the one nigga at a time rule. The one. Negro at a time because that's what the media does and I'm being honest there'll be 700 white comics with new TV shows half the time and then they'll get that one black comedian and give that person 900 shit shows and, and listen and this is not and I want I don't want anybody to, to misconstrue what I'm saying you're happy that somebody is up there but they act like and it's almost another form of racism where you just give everything to one black person as if and then now they're the prototype for fucking everything. Now when you go into an audition, they go, could you be like Kevin Hart, sort of? I'm like, no, because my name's Godfrey. Hey, could you be sort of Chris Rocky, Kevin Hardy? Maybe like, how about Chris Hardy Rocky, sort of? Mix it up, maybe Snipesy, Wesley Snipesy, Denzelli type of, can you mix it up? Can you just, maybe Samuel Jackson with a little sprinkle of Samuel Jackson and maybe some, uh, oh, I mean, <laughs> Maybe some Morris Chestnut, huh? I'll put a little chestnut in there. So that's what they do. Like, look at Steve Harvey, a guy like Steve Harvey. He hosts eight fucking shows, man. I'm not trying to be mean, but white people, there are other black people that can host shit. And I'm not taking anything from Steve Harvey. First of all, I watch the shit out of Family Feud, okay? I watch it because Steve Harvey has turned it around, put it over on his head, and it's, it's fun to watch. And I'm like, but there are other black people that speak English that can wear a suit. And, you know, look at late night. Look at late night. It's all a bunch of bunch of white dudes. Like, are you kidding me? And then when they put a black dude on, 20 years later, this, it's Arsenio fucking Hall. And I'm not dogging Arsenio because I'm a fan of Arsenio. He's one of the funniest human beings on the planet. And I love the Arsenio Hall show. But it took you 20 years to find the same black dude. We looked everywhere. We tried our best. And Arsenio is all we came up with. We, we tried our best. We looked in our barrel of Negroes and we just couldn't find... <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's an insult to a lot of the comedians, the, like a, the African-American comedians that have been around for a long time. There's so many funny wonderful comedians that would be would be able to fit in a late night slot. I'm not taking, there's Kimmel, there's Seth, there's, uh, uh, there's damn it, there's, what's his name, uh, there's uh, Fallon, there's all these white people on late night. And I'm just trying to keep it real. If you look at the history of comedy, the legends are black. I mean, let's be real. If you want to look at the Mount Rushmore co comedian, you got Pryor, Cosby, you got, you know what I'm saying? Martin Lawrence, you got a lot of us. Eddie Murphy, who is, I think, the highest grossing comedian in history as far as his whole career. You understand? One of the most famous. And it's like, if, like you said, it's only one black dude. And it fucking sucks because people start to compare you. Like Kevin Hart is the biggest thing out now. Kevin's my friend. Kevin's doing what Kevin's doing. This is my fucking lane. You know what I mean? Or the, You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to be Kevin Hart. I, you know, I, they, they say, well, you should be like, Kev. I go, I'm not trying to be Kev. I'm not trying to be Chris Rock. I want to be Godfrey. That's it. We can all s succeed in our own goddamn lanes. But the gatekeepers got to understand that, that when you see, when you see white actors, there's all kinds of them. There's fat, tall, short, there's dry humor, hyper. But us, it's always the same kind of black person. It's the same monotone, one, you know what I mean? It's the same one note kind of black person. And that's not fair because black people, we are diverse as shit. Comedically, you got guys like Hannibal Burris. You got the Lucas, the Lucas twins. You got all these, you got Wyatt Cenac. You got alternative black people. You got all, even black women. Black women comics get no respect. None. Barely. You barely see them on anything. You know what I mean? That's not, you know what I mean? They're not on anything, but we, you know, you see white women comedians every fucking where. And there's these black women comedians that are so great. And I can even name some. And I, in fact, Vladimir, I will have you look up somebody. Her name is Marina Franklin. She is so fucking funny. And she went to college with me, but she's an underrated comedian. And it's someone like her. When I see a lot of these African American comedians that don't get any love, it's like, are you serious right now? You know what I mean? 
It just, it, it, just, it just says spread the love a little more, you know what I mean? I'm just, ah. Uh. Steve Harvey has eight shows. He hosts everything. I'm surprised he ain't interviewing me now. I'm surprised <laughs> he didn't take over your show. <laughs> and I'm not taking anything from Steve Harvey. But damn, there are other black people. Spread it out. And that's why when you talk to some comedians, you might say, oh, they're bitter. I'm so tired of people using that word that we're fucking bitter. It's not about bitter. It's just like when you see injustice, you just and you express yourself. Here's the problem with our business is that you're supposed to smile and take a lot of shit, you know, and then when you just keep it real and go, yo, this is fucked up. Now you're bitter. It's like you're not bitter. You're just like you just want a little fairness. You know what I mean? It's like if, a, if women are saying, hey, we don't have enough women. We go like this. Just calm down. All right. You got to you got to check already. Just calm down. We just, you know, no, they're they, they're they're complaining for a reason. You understand? Because there's room for everybody. Vlad, there's room for everybody. That's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm I yapping. But that it's the truth. It just fucking annoys me. You know what I mean? I don't want to talk. I want to talk about, I mean, as far as style of comedy, my shit is, I'm an intellect, man. This is what I talk about. I'm a race man. I talk about the Klan. I do jokes about the goddamn Ku Klux Klan in front of all white audiences in red states. That's what I do. I want to, that's the kind of guy I am. Because I'm a thinker. You know what I'm saying? I'm a thinker. I like making people uncomfortable. You know? And that's my style. And my style should be respected. I should be able to be successful in the kind of style I am. Now, if I were... Listen, Vlad, if I were a white dude, I would have 30 fucking sitcoms by now. I ain't gonna front. Mm. 30 of them! See, when you're black and you're intellectual, they... Oh, well. well, well he's, a, he's shaking up the boat. We don't know about that. I don't really conform to a lot of shit. I mean, listen, I go to auditions. I'm I'm a good dude. I like to, I network, blah, blah, blah. But there's certain things, you know, that I ain't going to fucking do. You understand? Well, yeah. I mean, you and I are kind of similar ages. Right. And, and I, I remember being in high school. Yes. And, uh, you know, me and a friend of mine were talking yeah. back then. And he was talking about how, you know, and he, he was black. He was saying how, you know, the white kids... You could be the nerdy white kid. You could be the goth white kid. You could be yep. the skater white kid. You yep. could be the hard rock white That's kid. Right. But as a black kid, you're either the the hip hop black kid or the sports black kid, and you know, or, or the or the gangster black yeah, kid. Yeah. And that's about it. Like like ba back in my day, like in the you know in the the late '80s, early '90s, yeah. you couldn't be a black skater. Like that no. that was just just didn't exist. It didn't exist. Um, and the media didn't help that because. What's funny is I was I skateboarded when I was little. Mm. We all had skateboards. I'm this is right. the north side of Chicago. I grew up in Chicago and we had skateboards. All of us had skateboards. I played baseball. My brother played baseball. We played baseball, soccer. I was in a Chinese ping pong club. <laughs> I'm just saying, we played ping pong, we did pool, we swam. Hi guys. We swam <laughs> well, motherfucker. We swam well. We swam. I was a deep ender. I can brag about this shit. I was a deep ender at six years old. All right? Nine feet of water, grabbing a, one of those water bricks for your test. My brother, my sister, because my father was a swimmer. So we were paradigm busters. You know what I'm saying? And you're right. But when I went to high school, my high school it's um, in Chicago. It was the biggest high school in Chicago. It still is. It's called Lane Technical High School. And we had black goth kids. They, mm. But they were awesome. We had black skate skaters. We had black rock people. You understand? We had, and I like classic rock music. I I was like, yeah. My my, listen. My parents. We listened to country music. You feel me? And I'm African. I'm Nigerian. My mother had a whole collection of country shit. My parents. Remember Hee Haw? Fucking Hee Haw, Vlad. We used to watch. My parents would watch. Fucking Hee Haw. You want to talk about a redneck ass show? Hee Haw was the most redneck. And my father would be like, this show is good. I like this one. This is a very good show. Especially <laughs> when the donkey goes, Hee Haw, what? My parents used to watch Lawrence Welk. Do you know who the fuck Lawrence Welk is? Yep. Lawrence yep. Welk is this, you, you want to talk about the whitest show on the planet. People look up Lawrence Welk. He was this German like band leader. And, mm -hmm. and my parents would watch this shit. And they had one black tap dancer. That's it. <laughs> Look up Lawrence Welk. I'm giving people history real quick. So, you know, that's my thing. My thing and my style 
of comedy because I get everybody at my show, even if I'm on the road and, you know, because some clubs, black comics attract black people. White comics attract white people. My shows, it's a mixture of everybody. My shows yeah. have always been like that. And my thing is, and my purpose is to let people know we are different. We are diverse. You know what I'm saying? I've been exposed to a lot of shit, and I try to let people know that. Like, I'm listen, I'm not taking anything from another black community. They do whatever the fuck you want. But they need to respect the, the comics that look like me that are doing different shit. You know what I mean? I'm not going to always... Listen, a lot of times, the, the formula in black comedy was like, we were so poor. It was that. And if, if anybody fucking tonight, <laughs> good night. Dun, dun, k, 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 dun, k. You know, like, How y'all doing? Shuck my dick. I'm out. Dun, dun, k, k, dun, k. <laughs> and then the next comment come up, like he said before, but I fucked in the ass. Good night. Dun, dun, k, 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 dun, k, k, dun, k. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I used to, when I, and a lot of times when I would go on stage, I would go after shit like that and go, hey, well, my father's a teacher. Don't you hate mathematics? <laughs> I was the guy that just wanted to be, because there are a lot of us in our, in our community, I mean, the black community, that are very different. We've tried, a lot of us have traveled the world, a lot of us have, but we're so afraid to be different. Because a lot of times too, a lot of times black audiences will force you into talking about the shit they wanna hear. You know what I mean? They'll be like, man, this shit is corny, but I used to force feed them, man. You know, mm. Ber Bernie Mac always told me, I remember he told me I was sitting with him at three o'clock in the morning. I was very fortunate. People don't realize I had a very close relationship with Bernie Mac. And Bernie used to tell me, he said, let me tell you something, Godfrey. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. He said, this is what I like about you. Because you're versatile. You know what I'm saying? You don't talk about the same shit everybody talking. You see? That's how Bernie talked. And he told me, and he, I remember I took that to heart because I was doing shows in Chicago, and anytime you interview another Chicago person, they'll tell you, we were doing pimp shows, thug, drug dealer shows, gangster shows, and I would still be the same intellectual dude that I was, but I was still funny because I was comfortable with what I was. Because first of all, first of all, my father ain't gonna let you join no gang. My father's a teacher, and he'll beat the shit out you. So my father didn't, my, I couldn't even, you see, like, you know how people put shit in their hair? Like different parts. My father said, you have, you, my father said, you only get one line. That is it. One line. Because he, he associated everything with gangs. So we had to dress a certain way. We had to make sure we were clean for the, so the police wouldn't fuck with us. You know what I mean? And if we didn't listen, my father got in that ass. You understand? 